Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm happy to see that we the list is growing. We're having more people join. Good evening, wherever you're joining in from. Good evening. It's really, really great to have you guys on. Really great to have you guys on this call. How has been the day? I hope uh, Monday has treated you well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Nice to have you. Nice to have you, Rodrigo. Yeah, we are currently 27. Let's see as the number keeps increasing. Yeah, um, for those who don't know me, um, my name is Ozenwa. I am a product designer. I've been within the space for about, um, I've been designing for about six years now. I've had my fair share of um, the design space, starting my career as a graphic designer and then a front-end developer and then product design. Um, at the moment, I am currently an uh, AXR designer. So basically what I do is create interactions around extended reality. My main focus at the moment is um, virtual reality and augmented reality. And yeah, I'm happy to tell you that this um, topic, design and colors, is definitely one thing that you would get to experience across your entire design you know, um, fields. As colors are important when it comes to designing for web and mobile, it is equally important when it comes to extended reality. Very, very important, if I may say. Okay. Um, yeah, so a quick overview. Um, Today's going to be a very short class. I am not actually feeling too well, so I'm just going to do a quick introduction to what we'll be talking about, and then next two classes will definitely be hands-on practicals. And yeah, I'll be showing a lot more process and examples. So today I'm just going to be talking about a few things. Um common mistakes people make when it comes to choosing colors, things to note when it comes to choosing colors, you know, and um, yeah, some of those things are what I'll be talking about. I'm pretty sure if you, you know, stay close, you're definitely going to enjoy this session. It may be short, but definitely you're going to enjoy it because I'm going to be exposing um, my own process and some of the things I began to take note on very early on in my career as a designer that has helped me um, handle colors. In truth, I've actually never had challenges with picking colors as a designer. And I pretty much believe that's because my hands dirty with pins. into the design space. So I kind of like had a very good idea. how this works. Thank you very much, Faith. Thank you. Um, I kind of like traveled and I think, you know, I'm still recovering from all that journey. You know, I'm, I don't like leaving my space. So <laughs> Every, anytime I leave my space, I, my body kind of like reacts to it also. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. So um, well, basically that's the exposition, right? Um, yeah, so design and colors, understanding design psychology. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about how your colors, the colors you also, you know, whatever choice colors you're going for, how it affects moods, how it affects user action and things like that. Um, well, um, this class is going to be very, very interactive. However, if you've been in any of my classes before, you know I love to ask questions and I love feedbacks. I totally enjoy feedbacks. In my class, Nobody's wrong because all opinion counts. Your opinion is based on your experience and I appreciate you sharing your experience with us as well. So, um, yeah, so let's put it in the back of our minds. Your answers is going to do a lot of good. 
Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through. I have a very, very short slide here. I'm not even sure if I want to use the slide. You can still hear me. Apologies, I had to quickly attend to something. Awesome. All right, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so um, yeah, let's go. So what I have here is um, how does color affects design. So I'm quickly going to talk about how colors affect design and why it's definitely something you want to, you know, get to improve as a designer. So the first thing I want to talk about is how colors speaks brand. So a good question is this: if I'm to um, talk about google and i ask anybody like what are those things you notice each time you see a google product in terms of colors you know it's something we cannot deny when it comes to google a few colors start, one of them being white because of course white is basically google's you know, most elaborate colors. And of course, yeah, Google has several colors in, in their design scheme, but white definitely stands out. Now, let's go to something more um, relatable. And I'm going to use Apple. Now, if I'm to ask anybody, what is Apple's go-to color? As a brand, what is Apple's go-to color? I think it would be fair if we come to conclude on black. And of course, if you look at Apple's brand style, their products, you would clearly see a very, very well-defined black. It's a lot of black, right? And every, of their, every other color that comes out of their, like that features on their product is usually a... Um, a shade of black, a shade of white, you know, and you know they kind of have these very funny names for, for their whites and blacks as well. And of course, if you combine those two colors, you kind of get you know that's silvery color. So you know that's another good example, you know, I, I want to talk about. So the more when you're able to when you're able to create proper color for your designs you're able to register in people's mind what products you're building. Um, let's go to something around social media. Um, now, I, I would love to see in the comment section, when I mention a particular color, I want you to give me the first social media platform that comes to your head. 
yeah let's see let's see how much response you are able to get on that so if i say blue blue what is the social media platform that comes to head very good awesome like i, I do not expect to see anything different yeah so of course yeah facebook 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 twitter twitter facebook 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 twitter yeah now that is it so a, a good way to know how color speak brands is if i randomly design i open my figma i design a social media platform and i just slap blue on it and then i post it on my socials nobody wants to know the moment they're seeing blue they are all going to assume I took inspiration from Facebook or I took inspiration from Twitter. Because, yeah, like, when it comes to social media and blue, it's basically Facebook and Twitter, right? So that is one. Um, if I say green, and I, I, know, I know a few social media platforms that use green as well. So if I say green, what comes to mind? Exactly. Exactly. What's up? Now, do you believe or do you know that WeChat is also green? WeChat. But, of course, WhatsApp takes the entire crown when it comes to that color, right? Exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's more of WhatsApp in that scenario. Now, how about um, yellow? Yeah, of course, when, it's, when, when you say yellow, there's just one that comes to mind. Snapchat. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Someone just wrote empty hand on the chat. Lol. Very funny. <laughs> so I'm going to assume wherever you're from, MTN is a social media platform. I'm just going to assume. And of course, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, th th that's just it. Yeah. Like brands and colors are, well, basically, colors are just there to elaborate brands so if you want to create if you want to create designs that stick designs that people do not get to forget you need to you know you need to look closely at how colors affect this communication so basically call you use colors to communicate brands right so next up is how colors affect user actions um, I wish I had done a better job preparing the slide, but as I said, this is just going to be an expository, an introduction. Um, in the subsequent classes, I'm going to be having more detailed slides and definitely going to be doing a lot of live design and showing us more stuff. But let's see how we, we can move forward with um, this conversation we're having. Um, how does color attraction? So... I'm going to say a few words and I'm, I'm going to just, you know, give a line or a sentence and then suggest a couple of colors. And I'm going to ask you guys which color you will go for if you see it on the button, right? If you have to take an action. So um, let's say you land on a website and let's, it's, it's a, let's assume it's a fintech website. You're there to send money to your relative. You want to send money to your friend. And then the call to action says, um, hello, welcome to the fastest, um, trans the fastest um, web application for making transfers to friends and family. Sign up. And then you see two buttons. One of them is colored red. And the other is colored blue by default which would you want to go for great exactly hey, thank you yusuf yusuf says red is for debit <laughs> yeah so you get the idea right you get the idea now red is also a color, right? And red also deserves its own respect. But in that scenario, red does not communicate the action. And that is one thing we need to know. Red doesn't communicate the action in that particular situation, right? Now, I'm going to give another instance and then I'm going to ask you for... Uh, this is going to be a bit tricky, but let's see, let's see what you would go for on the regular. So, um, another instance, you're scrolling through 
let's say your gallery and then you find a set of pictures which you want to do away with and you find two call to action buttons um no let's say you want to hide let, if i say delete we all know delete is going to be red so that's that's a giveaway that's a giveaway yeah nelson i'm going to attend to that pretty soon i'm going to attend to that situation pretty soon so um so this instance you want to hide a few images iphone gives you but uh, smartphones give you the options to hide your images and then you see two colors the first is black the second is red remember the action is to hide images so which seeing those two which would you want to click on good now let's bear in mind that black is a negative color very similar to red in that situation right now if it were blue if it were let's say green you know it sounds it it, it would, would have given a kind of vibe but when it comes to communicating actions we must come to understand that Red is not the only color you use for destructive actions. So basically, they are called destructive actions. Thank you very much, Oluwase. You are right on, right on spot. So destructive actions are actions that has to do with actions that are not usually um, something that makes you happy. I, I, I don't know what I don't know how to actually define that properly, but the whole idea is there are actions that make you take a step backward right progressive actions are actions that make you go forward you no matter what the color is or no matter what it is you it's it's kind of like give you a vibe like you're actually going forward but destructive actions are actions that make you feel like you're taking a step backward and there are several colors that actually give up that vibe a good example of that is orange red black um what else i think basically majorly you have those three colors Colors, orange red and black for 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 orange you get like a line for um red you get like extreme warning or extreme danger while black is somewhere in between now let's now talk about how let's now talk about how um okay so uh, let's finish up let's finish up so i'm going to go to mood right now i'm going to go to mood <clears throat> excuse me i'm going to go to mood and i'm going to also talk about how Colors affect mood. So let's, I'm going to ask a very simple question and I want, I want feedback based on your, your own experience, right? Now I'm going to give, um, I'm going to just have, as done before, I'm going to call and I'm going to call a kind of mood and I'm going to ask you guys what kind of color you think depicts the mood best. So I'm going to start with, um, morning like morning 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 oh yeah so um, i mean good morning like good morning kind of morning so what color do you think describes your morning oh yes yeah, so i'm seeing yellow i'm seeing blue yellow blue orange green light blue white sky blue <clears throat> yeah i think this, this this results are positive these results are positive the results are positive right yeah i'm going to assume um, um people are you know um, the answers on yellow are based off the fact that you know your it's approaching dawn and the ideal color for dawn is yeah the the moonlight's yellow which of course makes uh, the sunlight yellow, which of course makes a lot of sense, right? Makes total sense. So we're going to put that. Um, I'm going to assume you have like your Figma very close by. You want to document that um, sunlight yellow or dawn yellow, you know, that kind of thing. And yeah, blue as well, particularly sky blue. Yeah, I'm going to reckon with that as well. I'm going to reckon with blue. I'm going to reckon with white as well. Now, I do have a bias when it comes to two colors, particularly white and, no, three, white, gray, and blacks. But there are also colors, but most of the time, I particularly, like Ozenua this time around, I love to you know, put them in a very special class. So, um, 
So I'm gonna take your white for in towards sky blue, right? Yeah, or blue and white as a mix. Great. So that those set of colors depict morning. And yes, I'm gonna that totally. Now I'm gonna say something else. I'm gonna say um um happy. Yeah, happy, happy as a mood. What colors do you think describe happy? Yes, yeah, so yeah, definitely, definitely. Orange, yellow, orange, yellow, peach, yeah, hundred percent, yellow. Yeah, I expect to see a lot of yellows, a lot of yellows. Ah, uh, red. Can I agree with red? I'm not so sure. I think red has. You know, we are just so familiar with having red as danger. But of course, it doesn't always have to be danger. Trust me, it doesn't always have to be danger. That topic I'm going to I'm going to um, talk about once I'm done, you know, here. But I'm go very much going to agree with yellow. I'm very much going to agree with orange. Yeah, I don't know. I totally agree with you there. Red is great for excitement. And of course, excitement doesn't necessarily have to be happy or sad. Excitement is a peak, like peak of an of any emotion right the peak of any emotion is excitement either you're happy you could be excited and happy excited and hungry and stuff like that so yeah i totally agree with you know yellow i agree with um orange i agree with peach so um yeah so that is that i think one of the one which of course may be controversial is um music music what color do you think goes with music now, I think this one will take you some time to actually ponder upon. Music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. music. All type of gradients. <laughs> nice, nice. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I was expecting to get several different answers here. So, yeah, let the answer keep coming in. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I, what I think, and I'll, you know, give some... Um, pointers to actually show you guys that i'm pretty I, I have data to prove yeah well yeah it definitely 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 it all depends on the kind of music awesome awesome now when it comes to music um music is a very very diverse um topic especially when it comes to mood but one color particularly stands out, and I'm going to explain why it stands out. One color particularly stands out when it comes to music, and that is black. Now, why, why would I say black? So, um, so basically, there are two colors, right? That is whites and blacks. And the reason why it is more of black, you could check, you could check your favorite music platform, check your favorite music platform, or check all your all the music platforms you're very, you know, familiar with, you'll realize there's a well-pronounced black within all of them. And that is because black gives rooms, black gives room for all. It's, that's just it. Now, black is a color that accommodates everybody and everything. And I believe that's why you would find a lot of blacks in music because music is different music can be interpreted to be anything by anybody and music is everything to everybody so that is why black excels now any other color can they come with black black and purple black and yellow black and red black and white black and green yeah i'm pretty sure that makes more sense now so basically black is it so Having said that, then let's talk about, I'm going to go back to brands and I'm going to use brands, the, you know, the arguments that were, that was raised in the chat section. Good. So what if my brand color is black, is red? What if my brand color is red? How then do I communicate my action buttons if my, you know, if my brand color is red? So I'm going to use YouTube music as a very good example. YouTube music is basically, 
two destructive colors, black and red. Beautiful, beautiful case study, beautiful case study. How do I design? How do I make people perceive my buttons, perceive very progressive actions? And I'm still going to be using black and red. How do I communicate action? How do I communicate um, choices without sending the vibe of danger in situations like this? And yeah, it's definitely a good question to look at. And with my experience with design, I have come to appreciate red more often than you would ever find people talking about. Because I believe there's a lot of st stereotype when it comes to red. People just want to, you know, when you're designing your UI, the moment it comes to a destructive action, you're not even thinking about it. You just want to slap it right there. Yeah, so, uh, this has prompted me to, you know, take a step back and understand how we can use red for even progressive action. And in situations like this, the watch to separate these things is by understanding how best to serve your colors. So one thing you want to do, if your brand color is red, one good thing you want to do is make sure it is accompanied by a substantial amount of black. Now, I trust you guys, I trust that you all know that Google is one of the best when it comes to defining color schemes. Well, basically, Google served us material design, which of course has be, become the um, go-to design systems when it comes to designing for mobile, right? So I took time to understand why black, why red for YouTube and YouTube music. And... During the course of my experiment, I tried using red and white, and that was where it all got exposed. The moment I began using red and white for um, the experiment I did, I realized that I was putting red. I was putting red in a very controversial situation because I already have white, which is, which of course is a neutral color, yeah, and. Rare instances, would you want to use white as a button? Because most likely your background would also be white. And if you're using white as a primary button, it simply means you would be having a lot of situations where your white is blending with the background. And that can be controversial because on the long run, your primary button begins to look like a text button. And according to material design, you don't want to have... Well, you could, but you don't want to have shadows around your white buttons on the white background it is not best practice so what other color could i put my red on and it will still look good enough and of course it turns out that black is like the go-to color so when you, you are in a situation where those two are like the colors to use it makes it even easier right now you can have red as your primary button and of course, you use white as text. And in the moment you do that, you begin to feel, you begin to, 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 to see something more progressive rather than destructive. Now, if you then want to create a destructive item or a destructive action, you use your black as the background and red as the text. The moment you do that, you begin to feel the vibe of a destructive action. It is something you want to experiment. Take a look at it and see what feedback looks. See, what the, see the kind of feedback you get. You can create a series of pages with different use cases and scenarios and send it to people, ask them for feedback. Which of those two buttons give them this vibe? Which of those two buttons give them a more progressive vibe? Which one of them give a more destructive vibe? And gather your... Um, Gather the, gather the data, and I, I'm pretty sure it's going to you know, help you in understanding what I just said. So yeah, that's on that. So next up um, that I'll be talking about is, yeah, so how then do you choose colors? I think as of right now, I've actually done a good job preparing us for this part of the topic. So how do you choose colors? So 
Um, this is going to be helpful. I am 100% certain that after this, after talking about this, I would get to see less um, traumatizing UI designs and more interesting UI designs. So as, as, a, as, a, as a senior designer, I've had many people come to me with you know, different UI designs. Um, I wish I was able to give an example. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, it, sometimes it's, it's truly traumatizing. I wish I could actually use a few examples, but I, I feel I wouldn't be doing so well. I don't know. Someone might be here who have actually sent me their design before, and then I'm using that design as a bad example. I did not want to do that. So most likely for the next class, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to use very ridiculous colors, and then I'm going to share them. That way, uh, nobody will feel bad. I'll probably just feel bad for doing such a thing myself. So, yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've noticed how young designers are so enthusiastic about colors. They actually do not pay attention to that simple step of choosing the right colors. Instead, they are more concerned about using as many colors as they can to express what is going on in their mind. Now, as good as that may sound, it is actually not what to do. Instead, you want to learn to minimize the, um, the number of colors you are using for a design, and you want to learn to stick to the most basic colors. So, yeah, let me just go straight to it. So, how do you choose colors? Well, the easiest way to choose a color is to use a brand color, right? So, let's say you get a, you know, you, you get a gig or you get into a company and the company already has its own brand style guide or its own design style guide. Whenever you're choosing your colors for whatever product you'll be designing for them, it's simple. You have your work cut out for you. Basically, just use their brand color. Now, I must also bring to your bring to your notice that some companies have terrible brand color, but there's always a way to work around it. I'm sure I'll be able to explain that in our next class. Okay, I got your question. I got a question I would... Um, can you send that to the Q&A section instead? I think if you can, can you just send it to the Q&A section instead so, you know, we, so it doesn't move away? Thank you very much, Shay. All right, so as I was saying, um, use a brand color. So, you know, just as I started with, you know, mentioning a few colors and what brands they are associated with, the same way there are many other brands out there that have their brand color. So if you want to choose a color for like a mobile application, you want to start with the brand color. Right? So next up, if there's no brand color, you do. Yeah, so uh, this, is, this is also a way forward. So in a case where you're working for a, let's say a, product that is just coming out the company is just you know also figuring things out there are no brand colors yet then what do you do now it's pretty easy as well go for a niche color so i'm gonna we all know we all know so i'm just i'm just gonna assume because i believe this is something you we should have noticed over time that certain spaces certain niches have their like go-to color the way it is expected for a medical brand or a health tech brand to use colors like purple, green, and blue, right? Those are niche colors when it comes to health technology or health agencies or health brands. You would see, of course, you always see white. You would see a bit of red. You would see some with purple. You would see some with green. You would see some with blue. Um... Another example is like the fintech space, right? In the fintech space, there is easy, that's easy. There is a whole lot of blue in the fintech space. 
um what other space what other space you you can you know yours in the in the chat section let me see what other spaces and other colors you guys have in mind right now in situations like that you um, if you're talking about luxury brands luxury brands you know there's a lot of black and gold when it comes to luxury brands so those products are well niched so in case you don't know what color to use or the company doesn't have a style like a brand color that's something you want to have like that's something you want to consider as an option you want to um use a color that is well known for that industry and of course yes it you should be able to make tweaks here and there but it's uh, it's one option to consider next up is define your secondary color now this is where many people get it difficult it's easy to choose a primary color you know you basically just want to choose like the main color once you've chosen the main color the next step is a bit difficult for most people and to help you with that there is no mathematics for it although there is a guide and that is what that is um the color wheel the color wheel is a proper guide for choosing primary and secondary colors for your projects right so if let's assume i'm pretty sure you can see the color wheel on the slide that's a color wheel you could look it up on google so basically what a color wheel does is it matches a complementary color with any color of your choice now these wheels can be very 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 elaborate than the one i have shared it can be very elaborate than the one I've shared. So um, this is just a very basic example. I, I'm choosing this because it's we can clearly distinguish the colors. So a, a color wheel is going to be very helpful in this case. So I'm going to say, um, let's say you're working on a brand and you're, you're using blue as your primary color. Now, you don't know what to use as a secondary color. If you come to a color wheel... The ideal color, according to this color wheel, is orange. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Sorted. Let's assume you're choosing purple. According to the color wheel, the ideal secondary color is going to be yellow. If you're using green, the ideal color is going to be red. Although, yes, as I told sometimes you need to be discretional about which colors you want to choose but basically the color wheel is like a shot to helping you choose matching colors for your secondary color now if you're not a fan of the color wheel like myself i am not a big fan of the color wheel you can you can consider using online web applications that have that provide the service of helping you choose colors for your brand. A good example is coolers.co. You can look it up. So basically what you do there is you go on the website, you enter in your primary color and you click on enter. It's, you know, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to present to you several different kind of color schemes that match that particular color you've entered. So it's a very, very, you know, it's an easy way out to helping you choose the set of colors you want to consider for your secondary color. Now, the third is always include whites and blacks. Well, not many people, not many of us consider white and black as colors. Though not many people consider white and black as colors, but white and blacks are also colors. Yeah, they are in the class of their own. They are basically neutral colors, but always factor whites and blacks into your design because less white in your design can ruin your design. Less black in your design can ruin your design. So you want to make sure that your paint is to your whites and blacks. Now, create a set of gradients. Now, what, I'm, what that means is this. So if using purple as your... Um, primary color, you want to create other shades of purple. Now, I will be explaining this more in 
the next class, we are actually be talking about how to create a color scheme. Um, yeah, so Olushe, uh, okay, okay, I, I would see, I would see, I would, I would try to do that. I'll try to do that. Um, the moment immediately I'm done with the slides, I will try to, you know, show you guys how to use colors. So, yeah, um, let's, as I said, I'm assuming you're choosing purple as your um, primary color. So what you want to do is, is create different shades of, um, of purple down to white. The, whatever co choice of purple you're taking, you want to create as you can or as, um, in, should I say many? No, don't, don't do too many. Don't, you don't need too many. You just need a few. Most of the time I do three. I do three shades of a color and basically that's it. I do three shades of a color. But you want to create other shades of that color because it will definitely come in handy. And yeah, that's it. So um, let me see if I can quickly show you guys how colors work. Um, all right, so here we are on colors. You can see there are a lot of not so... Yeah, so basically want to click on this button, start the generator. And it's going to load here, right? Blah, 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 blah. Next, next. Uh, yeah, I could just close this, right? Yeah, I can. So if I click on the space bar, it basically keeps changing the entire color if I click on space bar. So if you don't even know what primary colors you want to, let's say you just want to work on any product of your choice, you know, you just want to experiment on colors or you just want to create any product. You could just keep eating on your space bar until you, you know, get a list of color or get a set of colors that actually interest you. Now, if that's not the case, you want to do this, click on, click on one of these. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to enter, um, no, nope, not RGB, X, X, X code, H, E, X, H, E, X, is there an H, E, X here? Okay, I'm just going to use the, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to choose my primary color. I want to choose something around purple. Um, yeah, not, is this good enough? No. Um, yeah, this is good. So when I, once I have this, I am going to lock this color because I don't want it to change. I'm going to lock it. And once I've done that, I press space bar. So... Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be comparing this color to every other color I have here until I find a color that is well matching with my primary color. Now, I love this one here. I love this dark purple. So I'm going to lock that as well. If I want to continue, I can continue. But if, I, if I'm fine with these two, I could just pick this two and, you know, move on. But if I need more colors, I just keep tapping. I keep tapping... Yes, I love this as well. So I'm going to lock this. Um, yeah, I, I can do with this red. And keep doing this until, yeah, I think this green is good. And voila, I have that. And yeah, I have my colors. Easy peasy. So I'm just going to, I'm going to copy my colors. I think there's a way you can export to... All right, I'm sure you get the drill. I'm pretty sure you get the drill. So basically, yeah, that's how to use colors. I hope it was clear. Yeah, so I use space bar. I use bar to switch the colors. Keep eating on space bar until I find colors that I feel look good enough. Right? So this is like a easy way out instead of you to um, racking your head to get a call. So this is like an easy way out. So next up is next up is um, how to use, yeah, how to then use colors. So I'm just going to share my slide and that's 
that's going to be the last slide for this class, how to use these colors. So now, the beautiful thing about how far we've gone is that it still doesn't help you understand how to use colors because you could still mess the entire thing up. So I'm going to, you know, share, I'm, I'm going to discuss how to then use these colors. Now you've chosen your colors. One thing to note, no color is bad. Um, after many designers have, you know, talked about colors you should avoid using, I've also once been a part of them. I've once, you know, um, told people to never use red, yellow, use blue and red. You know, I've been one of those designers that has, you know, said things like that. But I felt like that was wrong. I don't think anyone should tell anybody what colors not to use. Instead, we should learn how to use those colors. So I remember working on a design and the color used for those de for that design is um, I used blue, I used red, I used yellow, and I used black. Now, I'm sure you all heard the colors I mentioned. They are the same colors you do not want to use together. But I took my time to mix all four colors together and it came out wonderfully well because I had to understand how these colors work. And what proportion do you want to use each of these colors to come up with something very beautiful? So yeah, the issue has been how people use colors, not the colors themselves. So one thing to note is this, you need to emphasize one color at a time. You need to emphasize one color at a time. You don't want to have too many colors within the same space. It ruins the entire thing. It ruins the entire experience when you have too many colors within a spot. So let's say you're working on a website, a landing page, and your hero section is somewhere to consider. You don't want to have three, four colors on your hero section. That is a lot. For me, I stick with my main color. I stick with a secondary color or an alternative color, and then I stick with either white or black, making three all together. Now, my primary color and my secondary color, my alternative color, are basically the main thing. For me, white and black are, uh, they are an essential, so I would always use white and black. So, basically, I can see I'm actually using two colors for my hero section. Now, you could equally do one. No, you can't. You can. So if you're using purple as your background, you definitely need a button, which of course cannot be purple, right? So in situations like that, or basically the old idea is emphasize just one color at a time. So if purple is your major color, I'm going to say, or I'm going to assume that purple is going to take about 60-70% of that particular page, right? Your whites or black, depending on what you choose to use, you definitely don't want to use black on purple. So yeah, disclaimer, you, you don't want to use black and purple. So you, most likely you'll be using white. Your white is going to take about 10% since it's just going to be, mm, not 10, 20% since it's going to be text. And maybe your button is then going to be the secondary color. And of course, you can't have 100 buttons on your hero section. Most likely you're going to be having two buttons. So that can take 10% of that particular screen. Now, the emphasis will then fall back on the purple because that is the only color you're emphasizing at that particular time, right? So that's something to consider. Um, next up is if, if you don't know what color to use, please use white. So I have, I have um, said this a lot of time on my socials. Whenever you're working on mobile applications, this is like the safest advice. The safest advice would be for your background, use white. It's the safest advice. I'm not saying you... I've, I've, I've worked on several applications where my backgrounds are not necessarily white, right? But if you want to be in a comfortable yet safe situation, the best thing for you to use is a white background. A white background can never go wrong. Now, this is not even a topic of light theme or dark theme. That is... A completely different topic but in a situation where you're not sure if you want to use 
a solid color like blue or green for your background. It is safe and it is very, very, very convenient to stick to white. Now, next up is create space for your secondary and alternative color. Now, what that simply means is if you're going to be, as I the first example I gave, where purple is your background color. When I say create space, I mean make sure you're using a color that can sit on purple and not cause chaos. Right? So you want to use a color that sits properly on, on purple. So that's what I mean by create space for your secondary colors. Now, emphasize contrast. Another very important topic that I see many people not paying attention to. So a good example is this. I particularly love to use pastel colors. So what are pastel colors? Um, pastel colors are your regular colors that are very close to white. Um, let me see if I can show. Let me see. Let me see. I'm, go I'm going to try to do this pastel color and share my screen so you guys can get it good. I think I have an example here. So I'm going to stop sharing here and I'm going to show. Yeah, so this is a pastel color. Now, if you take a look at it, you, I'm, I'm sure you all get the idea now. These colors are close to white than their original color. So this is pink. This is pink as well. Now, this pink is very close to white. This blue is very close to blue. You can see how on, on, the, on your color picker, you realize that whenever you choose any of these colors, it's the approaching white. Now, that's a pastel color. Now, what that means is, or what I'm trying to say is, whenever you're using pastel colors, try as much as possible not to use white on those colors. Because the moment you do that, your design becomes inaccessible. And of course, it creates accessibility issues, right? So you want to emphasize on contrast. If you're already using a background color that is already close to white, then you want to use a, mat a color that is of high contrast, something very sharp, something like black or full-scale blue, full-scale purple, full-scale red, right? If you're going to be if you're going to be using a pastel red, right? Some a red a, you're you're choosing a red color and then you're um, approaching white. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be showing you guys all of this thing in our next class. And I think so. Definitely, I'm gonna be using the same slide, but this time it's going to be hands-on practical, so you all see what I'm actually talking about. So you want to use high and low contrast together. You want to. Put, if you're using a, 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 a pastel background, you want to use a text or an image or an icon that has high contrast so that it can actually stand out on your background. And lastly, one style at a time. So what does that mean? I've seen designs where people use different kind of gradients. So basically, it's all a gradient issue. It's basically a gradient, a gradient issue. So I've seen linear gradients, I've seen radial gradients, I've seen triangular gradients, all in the same design. Well, basically what I figured out is this person is just trying to understand Figma, right? You're just trying to experiment with the options you have, but it's worth talking about. If you're going to be using flat colors, I love to use flat colors. Rarely would you find me using gradients because gradients can be very controversial and sometimes can be difficult to create. But nonetheless, I will show you guys how to create proper gradients in our next class. But nonetheless, stick to one style at a time. If you're going to be using a primary button that has a gradient style, you want to mirror the same for your secondary button. The whole idea is to create a visual design that communicates a very distinct message. You don't want to create ideas in the mind of people. You know, it's like I'm seeing your design. I see a lot of gradients, but today and then tomorrow I'm seeing your same brand, but this time I'm not seeing any gradients. It causes a lot of conflicts when you're not using one style at a time. So basically, that is what I'm talking about. And that said, I 
that's all I have for um, this topic. We have three minutes left for um, for it to be an hour. So I'm just going to go straight to the Q&A and answer as many questions as I can. So the first question, yes, is what to bank, what of bank, I'm going to assume that is, or what of banks that use red as their city buttons on white background? Now, you know something? So I'm going to be very biased with this comment. Banks don't really do well creating the best UI designs. So if they're doing something like this, it's most likely one of their very, very, you know, numerous design errors, right? But nonetheless, let's, let's just continue. Most times, the red are too much on the design. Yes, I agree. Like dashboard, active fields, debit amount, e.g. Zenitab, and of course, many other UBA as well. What can be done? Because I read somewhere that most traditional banks don't use dark mode based on the customers they have. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So, Olushe, I want you to put this, you know, do something. I want you to do a proper case study. Now, when I'm talking about case study, I'm not expecting you to do the very conventional case study like finding most people's i want you to do a proper research understand why banks have their designs the way they are now i said banks do a bad job creating the best uis but i am I'm pretty sure it they all have their reasons because i'll not be facing the same direction for no good reason i want you to take a deep dive deep dive a deep dive understanding why bank applications are as ordinary as ordinary can get. Now, a good point here is they don't use dark mode because of age and stuff. Yes, that is a very, very good point. And you cannot, you know, no matter how good as a UI designer you have, you cannot debunk that, I, that fact that dark mode does not apply to everybody. Sometimes dark mode can have accessibility issues. Yes, dark mode has its own positives, which includes it reduces the intensity of light. Very true, but nonetheless, there are always pros and cons. Now, if a very fancy design gives more problem than actually solutions, then it is good for the banks to keep with their very, you know, rugged and poorly looking UI. But I want you to do a proper case study to understand these things. Once you understand why, it is easier to recommend solutions. Now, I am not saying some of the designs are not flawed, like very flawed some of the design choices are very flawed but i believe once you begin to understand the reasons behind most of their decisions it is then easy to create a solution for them and yeah maybe you would definitely be able to write you know a proper case study that would help many banks make proper decision next time they are working on their mobile applications so i think it's a plan something you want to look into so the next question says, do you actually need different types, not sheets, of colors for a UI design? Now, coming from Ozenwa, I'm going to say, no, you do not need to. I've worked on designs where the only colors I use are just colors, nothing less. No more, no less. I used exactly my primary button, exactly my second, sorry, exactly my primary color, my secondary color, one alternative color, and then I use my whites and blacks. I did not create other shades of the same color. So the reason why you need other shades of the same color is in situations where you want to create variants of an action. You want to create other variants for a particular action. So a good example, if I am designing cards and I want to use icons, rather than slapping my icon directly on those cards, I, would, I love to place my icons on a subtle background. That is not the primary color or the secondary color. Now, the only way I can do that is by creating a shade of that color, right? Now, that is one way to do it. Now, the alternative is to use solid field icons and then just use my primary, right? So it's all about your design choices. Now, every action you take when it comes to UI design should be backed up by an actual design choice. Your design choices should be backed up by what you want to do, what you intend to do. But if it is compulsory, I'm telling you now that it is not. Also, if so, the next question is: if you if your brand or primary color is yellow and your warning color is yellow, no, you can't have your warning color to be yellow if your no 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 you can't you can't yeah you can't so um a moment please.
All right. So, um, yeah, I, I, I understand what you're trying to say, but it's, it can happen. In that scenario, you need to define other options. Easy peasy. Just define other options, right? You want to define. Now, how do I pick a CTA color for dark mode? For instance, I am using purple for light mode CTA. How do I get dark mode to pass the accessibility test? Well, in the first place, it's... So most of the time, I want you to notice, look for, go make research on products that have light and dark mode. You realize that their primary buttons are not changing. They are not changing at all. Now, the reason why that is, is because they have done a careful job of choosing a primary button that will sit well on either white or black. Now, purple has, purple has different shades. Easy. There are different shades of purple. Keep changing the shades of purple until you have that one that passes well in. Lastly, how do I create CTA for dark mode? Well, the same question, actually. That's all the question we have. And yeah, it's been, I believe it's been a very exciting um, class tonight. I, I hope I was able to communicate. I know I didn't show enough. And that is the essence of the next class. This is 100% introductory, right? Yeah, the video is recording. After the class, you should be able to access the um, video from my profile on Light Hall here. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see you guys for see you guys um, um, on Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed this class. If you did, talk, talk about it on your social media, about it on LinkedIn, talk about it on Twitter. And yeah, um, whatever you've learned, I am eager to see you go back to one of your old designs and redesign it. So if you know you have a design that you were not so sure about the use of colors, this is a good opportunity to use what you've learned to make that adjustment. And I would love to see those designs starting from tonight, tomorrow, down to Wednesday. I will be taking a look at those designs and giving you my feedback. Um, yeah, thank you very much for staying to the end. It's been really great having this session. I'm looking forward to the next one. And yeah, come with your questions, come with whatever you have. I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much. See you again next day. Cheers, everyone. Bye.